settings in your high resolution human beings. Now, elevation maps. I do love them. You just have a simple black and white image, you drop it onto plane and boink, you've got yourself a landscape. But getting all that detail out is geometrically quite heavy. Now we do want geometry, so we can clone things onto it, we can simulate dynamics on top, but we don't want that to have too much detail. To use a simple 4K elevation map at full detail, you need just over 16 million polygons. And that easily gets impossible to work with. But then when time comes to render, we absolutely do want all that detail. So that is the struggle. So how do you find a balance between a high quality render and a speedy and simple landscape to work with? Well, ¿por qué no los dos? If you know me, you know I'm a big fan of stupid but correct solutions. So get ready for another one. All we need is a low resolution proxy for the landscape, like I've got here in my file already, and a full resolution version of the landscape. And then we're going to use the difference in detail as a displacement map on the low res version. And trust me, it's really going to be stupidly simple. Here is the scene we're going to be working in. I've got my mountain set up here on a plane using a displacer and not much else in the scene. And if I render it, it looks pretty much the same as it does unrendered. I'll be using standard renderer throughout, but you should be able to use any old renderer. Alright, first we need to set up our depth maps. And that means creating a camera and perfectly framing our volcano using that camera. So I'm going to put that directly above the mountain. I'll set it 1000 centimeters up and point it directly down at the mountain. I'm going to go to object and set the camera projection from perspective to parallel because we don't want any foreshortening or perspective in our depth renders. Next, I'm going to go into render settings and set the output to be exactly the same as our full resolution elevation map of the mountain. And then I can jump into top view, find where the camera is and simply drag this green frame of the camera to match up with the size of our mountain, just so it frames it perfectly. And it does help to set it to show wireframes as well. I'll we'll just drag. Draggity drag. Zoom. And draggity drag drag. Until it is as close as possible around the edges of the mountain. Now to set up the depth for that camera, I'll jump out of it so we can see what's going on. And then go into the object tab again on the camera, set the focus distance to 1000 centimeters. That puts it directly at essentially zero elevation in the scene. Then I'll go into details and set the depth of field map front blur end point so it matches the height of the mountain. That's also easier to do from probably a side view. We want to match the height, but we also want to make sure there's a little bit of space on top, just in case the mountain displaces a bit more when it's higher resolution. All right, let's set up the thing we're actually going to render. We need a copy of our reference mountain, which I'm going to name low because it is the low quality one and that doesn't need the displacer in fact it shouldn't even have it and then i'll make a copy of this plain material i've got here and that one low as well and all we need to do is jump into displacement and match that displacement to the displaced deformer in our reference mountain so i'm going to first of all copy the shader that i'm using paste that into the texture channel then go under object and copy the height and also make sure that the type is set to whatever it's set to on our displacer. So in this case, it's intensity instead of the default intensity centered. Let's apply that material to our low mountain. Zoom in a bit. Let's turn off the low for now and do a little render of what the reference mountain looks like. We then disable the rendering on the reference mountain and enable the low mountain. Render again, they do look identical. Perfect. Now let's do the same for the high res version. Again, copy the mountain, call that one high, 
copy the material, call that one high. Apply the high material to the high mountain and go into the displacer and make some more tweaks. All we essentially need to do is check sub polygon displacement and the subdivision level only needs to be set to three. Why three specifically? Well, that's because the plane itself is 512 by 512 polygons and the full res image that we're using is 4096 by 4096 pixels. So we need to subdivide this plane one, two, three times for it to have one polygon per pixel, effectively being full quality. Now, a very important final thing that we need to do is to go into the filter that I'm using here and increase the brightness here on the high quality material by about 2%. And the reason we have to do that is to make sure that the high res version is always slightly above the low res version. Otherwise, the high res version is in certain places going to be below the low res version and in other places be above it. And when we then try to figure out the difference in height between those two, a negative difference is going to look the same as a positive difference, but it won't render correctly. So always make sure that the high res elevation map is slightly above the low res one. All right, then just a few final tweaks in render settings and then we will be ready to render. First thing I want to do is increase the anti-aliasing a little bit from geometry to best. Max level two times two should be enough. And we most definitely want to activate the multi-pass and remember to include a depth map. That is the whole point of this operation. And then under save, we can uncheck the regular image because we only need the multi-pass image. I'm going to set that to a PNG at 16 bits per channel. And then we name that file something clever like mountain low to begin with. And then we activate only the low res version of the mountain, jump into our camera and let that render. And now let's do the exact same thing with the high res mountain. Activate the high res, name that I. And give it a render, which will take a little bit longer because it needs to calculate all that displacement. Now, let's bring these two bad boys over to After Effects. I've imported them both here and I'm going to drop them into a new composition where they can sit nicely on top of each other. Then I will do exactly what I said I would. I will set the transfer mode of the top one to difference. And if we adjust the exposure a bit, we can see that it's generating something like a grayish, almost lightning patterned image here. To actually make that visible, we just need to make an adjustment layer and we just need to add a levels effect on that and simply crush the whites until they start showing themselves. No racism intended. And since we need to crush them so severely, I tend to duplicate the levels a couple of times just so we can see what's actually going on with the histogram. We want to make sure that we don't crush them too hard so nothing clips out completely. But this is looking good enough to me, so I'm going to set the workspace to be just one frame. Add this to the render queue. Output module, I'm going to select another PNG, set it to trillions of colors, so we're still getting those full 16 bits of super smooth displacement map. Set the output and give it another clever name. And render that. Now let's have a look at how this goofy ass technique actually works in Cinema 4D. All right, so same file. I'm going to disable both the low and the high, jump out of the camera and only use the low res reference mountain, 512 by 512 polygons. That's using the plane material. And now I'm going to go into that displacement and load up our freshly made displacement map. And of course, I want sub polygon displacement this time. Again, set to three. Now for the height, I'm not quite sure what that has to be. So we're just going to have to eyeball it. Let's push in on the crater here and do a little test render. Ooh, we're going to have to activate the object first. 
All right, so that is actually giving us a lot of detail. If anything, it's a bit too heavy. So I'll turn down the height to something more like that. And that's looking a lot more reasonable. What we can do is compare it to the actual high-res version to see just how rough it should be. And it looks like somewhere around two centimeters is going to be the magic number. Now, if you think your edges are looking a little bit rough, you can always check the round geometry. So that is the result. The landscape is damn near identical to the full resolution version but we've still got the benefits of working with a very simple low resolution mesh. But as soon as we render it, that displacement map brings in the rest of the detail. And as we're going to see in the next couple of tutorials, most importantly of all, we can now mix this displacement map together with all the displacement maps for the various types of materials that we'll be using on the landscape. But that's next time. So until that time, thank you for your time and stay in motion. If you're looking for a way to support my tutorial making, the best way to do that is to tell every freelancer you know about the Process of Motion course. It's going to help them make nicer work for nicer clients, and it's going to help me make more of these tutorials. The link to the course is in the description.